Good day, I'm Denise Phillip. I'm the content analyst for Ngerati.com. And we're coming live to you from the African Utility Week studio. And with us this morning, we have Chamabi Na. Um, he's the research officer of the Energy Commission of Nigeria. Thank you so much for taking time out of Thank your busy you schedule. Much. How is the event going so far for you? Well, it's been going fine. Atmosphere is great. And um, lots of companies are around. Um, key players in the energy sector in Africa around yeah. and I mean it's been great so far very thought provoking keynote speeches so much I've learned so far I think it's been good fantastic um, so we've got you here just to talk about the black hats that are taking place in Nigeria um, you know it's pushing population and businesses to invest in self-generation um, apparently only 50% of the electricity generated comes from the grid so there seems to be quite a lot of opportunity um, you know, when it comes to off-grid electrification. Um, how can utilities tackle this potential gap um, for earnings? Well, interestingly, um, Nigeria has hovered around the 4,000 megawatts for like um, maybe 20 years or so. So every year there are investments into the sector, but we did not really see any improvement, kind of. And, um, there are many issues that have kept us in this same level for so long. Um, there are cases where we can't generate enough power. There are cases where we generate power, but um, the machineries um, are not maintained properly. So over time, it goes bad. The transmission network, sometimes it's obsolete. Distribution, the same thing. Well, the government um, tried to privatize the generation and the distribution, and then they own the transmission network. Um, so far, there's not been any significant improvement either. Um, the gas-powered plants have issues getting gas to them. So you build a gas power plant, and then you can't get gas to it. So the problem too. So the blackout has been a serious issue. In uh, three months ago, there was a zero megawatt production of power, and that was really bad. But um, the opportunities in this sector, it's a lot, because we have most part of the rural community with no access since they ever existed. And so there's a huge gap, and um, I think it's high time um, more people, whether the government or the private investors, come into this gap and try to do something about it. The blackouts are actually terrible. Personally, I get to have electricity for maybe six hours in the day. And at times, I might not have it for like two days, but um, I think the government is actually looking into it and they, uh, they have a plan to ensure that they have incremental power every year. I hope they are able to to do it in that way. Okay. So um, obviously small generation, um, plenty of opportunity there. What is the potential there and, and how are utilities, uh, are utilities interested in developing it? Okay, small generation um, is key mm -hmm. because um, the focus seems to be on the urban centers and um, Obviously, if you live in the urban centers and you don't go to the rural communities, you wouldn't know what's going on there. But I've had the opportunity to go to some rural communities. And it's sad because um, these guys actually have some things going on for them. Um, communities where they farm and then um, a truck has to come to the community to take their farm produce maybe every five days back into the town or the urban areas and they do not have any access to either store what they produced or to even go into other small businesses. So small generation is actually important because you see for the investor it's business. For the customers they want electricity. Now the investor say if I take electricity from this point to the rural community Will they afford the tariff? Can they pay for it? Will it be worth investing in? So usually there is this um, habit of leaving them out because investors feel they can pay for it. Even the government feels that way sometimes. So I think it's high time 
people have smaller generations in this community. So you don't have to say you want to bring the grid down to this community. You go to those communities and then give them the mini grid or the micro grid, depending on what sort of generation they have. So let's talk about the mini grids. Um, you know, are there any developments currently or any projects that are, um, uh, you know, about to uh, to be launched? Um, yeah, there are. To further developments. There are projects ongoing. Um, are sponsored by um, the World Bank and all the rest. Um, interestingly, they might not be so much because when you look at the rural community in Nigeria, it's I mean it's, it's a huge it's a huge one. And there are projects going on right now, but if I was to quantify the projects in percentage, I would say maybe just 2% um, of the entire rural communities are, and those projects can only cover just 2% that are ongoing right now. So the gap is still very huge. Yeah. So, you know, the outages are obviously affecting uh, big business as well. Of course. So would, would a, a um, self-generation for them be an option too? Okay, currently, um, most huge companies, the big companies, do not rely on the grid. The ones that rely on the grid, rely on the grid for maybe lighting loads, but for their basic operations, they do not, because they know the effect of having a downtime in their production processes, for example. So they prefer to use gas-fired plants and have contracts with the gas suppliers so that they can maintain 24 hours, 24-7 continuous power supply for their operations. So it's a case where many big companies self-generate even more than they require. So there are cases where they require, let's say, 11 megawatts generate 25 and there is no way to even push out the remaining 14 for example to um, a disco that will be willing to buy the power off them and then give it to the customer so it's a case where they generate at a high price that's the big companies they have excess power but the discos the discos cannot buy the power from them because they will be willing to sell at a high price which the customers in return cannot afford so, okay. big companies are actually self in fact, let's not talk about big companies. The medium companies, even the small businesses, I mean, um, a hair salon, a tailoring shop, they all have their small generators, one kV generator, everybody's self-generating as much as they can. It's pretty expensive though, sitting with a generator. But everybody needs electricity, yeah. so they would probably do everything they can to get the power. But obviously, in turn, it means that the clients get to pay for all the expenses. It's usually not very easy because to break even in a business where you self-generate at a high price is, I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous. So what's the next step? How do you think that the utilities should go about this or the government should go about this? Because this is, this is quite a, um, a, a big um, a market potential, isn't of it? Of course, yeah. Well, like I said before, um, it's business for the utilities and um, they have to find a way to make their money back or break even at least. I think usually um, the example I would give is when the telecom companies came to Nigeria initially, M10 for example, South Africa, yeah, and um, the tariff was quite high and over time other people came into the space the tariffs dropped and then they were now per second billions. So now an average Nigerian doesn't know how much it costs him per second. He just makes a call and he trusts that the automated system will then take care of it. So I think the same thing goes for the um, power companies. I think it's a case where they go to these communities, they invest and they look at long-term returns, not short-term. Because if you go for short-term returns, it means that the tariffs will be so high, and there's a likelihood that people wouldn't want to um, pay for such. Or if they pay for such, it means that um, they wouldn't get the chance to use it for longer than they would. So in my own opinion, I think that it's good if the utilities actually go into these communities 
and um, invest long-term projects and ensure that um, all the necessary auxiliaries in terms of metering and um, awareness on how to conserve energy because I think it's a problem in Nigeria where you just turn on your lights, open your tap. It's not just and, generation, yeah. isn't it? So it's in a case where the investor too. wants to go there, if yeah. I'm going to generate this amount of kilowatt hour, yeah. I should tell the community, look, I'm generating this for you. This is the tariff I'm giving you. But if you want to consume more energy, go for energy efficient appliances. So it's a whole lot of things put together beyond right. just investing money. I think people have to be aware that, okay, this is the tariff. If I use energy this way, I'll probably get this and this more services. I think in the long run, um, the gap is there. And I think the utility should actually go and get these people because there's a lot of opportunities in the sector, a huge one. This is going to be my second last question. Um, yes. Do you think the, the utilities know that they have to take this path? Do you, do you think that they are prepared to um, you know, promote energy efficiency and sustainability? Uh, do you think that they are equipped and prepared um, for what lies ahead? Well, I think um, what the utilities will think of first is um, the environment in which you're going to invest. Um, in an environment where you're not sure that you would get back the money you invest, there's a likelihood for the investor to want to back out, but not even go there at all. So I think on the part of the government, there has to be some policies, regulations, and the environment that makes it um, friendly for both the utilities to come in and for the customers to be able to get service um, that they need to provide. But um, in the end, I think they are prepared, but usually it's about um, the environment. If I go in here, am I sure the economy will be stable? Am I certain these policies and laws are going to protect me as well as the customers? So um, even the risk involved, is the government going to take part of the risk? Because sometimes we put all the risk on the utility and nobody really wants to do business that way. So especially when you're not sure of the environment. So it's a case of um, the assurance that the government can take part of the risk and that the environment will be good for them to yeah. operate and that at least they can break even. Mm -hmm. So I think they're prepared, but I think it's, um, it's more of the utilities want, wanting to make sure that um, the environment is okay for them yeah. to come in and invest and mm -hmm. be sure that um, they won't have any problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially in a case where they have to bear all the risk. Right. But my last question to you, um, as, as, a, as a, a last takeaway, um, what would your advice be to um, utilities, not only in Nigeria, but to uh, utilities around Africa? Okay. I, I think I've dwelled on Nigeria too much because um, <laughs> that's where my own first hand experience is. Yes, of course. But I've been to other countries and I think it's basically the same thing. But there are some countries that are actually um, moving forward when it comes to closing the gap and the opportunities in the rural communities, Rwanda, Kenya, and so on. Um, I think it's important for the utilities to have some sort of partnership with the government and um, let the government know in clear terms what they would need to operate in these countries because if you do not make it in clear terms somewhere there's a misunderstanding you've invested money the government can back out any time and then you lose so i think they should be able to collaborate with the government make sure they have clear agreements as to who bears what percentage of the risk and then what the tariffs should be and um, how they can I mean, projects that are scalable, how they can expand these projects, and um, how the customers can benefit in the long run. So I think, in the end, um, around Africa, it's a, a big opportunity. But let's not forget that we cannot just keep energy in um, isolation. There's always a connection between the energy and water and food. So. We, holistic view right obviously, yeah, yeah it's just energy but mm. then i think they are all connected and so yeah. 
um, the water sector, for example, does not get as much credit as the energy sector. So yeah. I think um, for the utilities, they have to talk to the government, ensure that they have the right environment, and I think everything will work fine. Super. Well, sound advice. Thank you very much uh, again for joining us in the studio. You're and welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, what's left of it. I will. And thank you very much for watching us. Uh, I am Denise from Injurati. Thank you.